the money shot. <laughs> Welcome to the Appetite for Discussion show with your host, Brandon Crouch. Tonight's show is brought to you in part by Hunko Junk Calling. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Appetite for Discussion. As always, if you can name tonight's intro song, title, and name of the artist, you win a gift certificate of 10% off of any Black Flag Holster Company merchandise. And that's a company owned by Mr. Aaron Moore and also Mr. Sean Thompson. That's my business partner. He owns the concealed carry side. The of concealed it. carry yeah. side. So we got uh, the gun holster company plus uh, some information tonight about uh, concealed carry. And uh, I want to thank you both for being on. I've thank been you for uh, excited about this show. Um, you know, I, I've known you for a while, um, and it's been a long time since I've seen you. But the last time I saw you, you were not doing any sort of. Um, you weren't into firearms. You were actually doing artwork. Yeah. Well, so. I've always been into firearms. Um, well, I guess a, a firearm company. Right. right. Um, but artistically, like, I've always liked to love dr- to draw or create or, or whatnot. And I think then, which has been several years ago, maybe pre-2012, maybe six years ago, maybe a little longer, I was doing sneaker restorations and customizations, as crazy as that sounds, but... That's a big, big, big industry. Right? When, when you say sneaker, what, what do you mean, re- restoration? Uh, so you just take a pair of beat-up shoes and make them look brand new. How, how do you do that? It's, it's a lot of uh, trade secrets. I don't know if I can gotcha. give away Gotcha, fair that. enough. So you would do you would just restore them, or mm-hmm. you would put artwork on them, or uh, both? Both, yeah, both. Most, most of my clientele were guys that had vintage Air Jordans. Right. Oh, you know, I have a lot of listeners who love Air Jordans, yeah, so. and they collect them. Yes, I mean that's yes. a huge market. I was one I, of those guys. You, so you too owned a pair, yeah. or not owned a pair? Shit, you you collected Air Jordans up to about seventy five pairs. Seventy five pairs. Yeah. You know, people. This is uh, it's just like anything, but people have their collection of Jordans uh, insured. Mm, yeah, absolutely. That is crazy. Well, I mean, it's it's also cool. A, a friend of mine is a sneakerhead. Uh, I think that's what guys go by, right? If you're sneakerheads yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. And he has, uh, shout out to Sean Morse. <laughs> he um, he took me into his closet, and it's just like, he's got sneakers everywhere. Shit you've never seen. Stuff mm-hmm. that guys wore in like a pickup game for like some charity summer league. Um, he has uh, like so many Jordans and even these unique rare KDs and yeah. some Kobe's that people have never seen that aren't even in circulation. You know, there's a whole like underground oh, it's a community. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. And you, it's probably attributed to uh, the hip hop community, right? And oh, for like sure. 90s babies, right? Like us that grew up in the 90s to watch Jordan play and, and oh. the, the highlight of like Magic and Larry and, and all that. So it was just, it was a piece of our youth that just kind of just has been reborn, right? Like right. sneakers still today are just crazy. And in fact, um, I've held on to a couple pairs. My most coveted pair that I have is a pair of 1985 original Air Jordan 1 black and reds. Really? Those yeah. are your favorite, most my, coveted pair? That's my coveted pair, and it's actually re- was released in 1985. So I have the original Air Jordan 1s, and, and I'll probably never let go of those. So you've had the same pair, or you have you reworn no. a pair? So when I was in the sneaker culture, you would go to trade shows. It's no different than trading bubble gum. Or, or sports cards or comic books or yeah. there's conventions and you go to these things right and um and i think for this particular instance someone had them in a closet and we're gonna throw them away and i was like i'll give you 40 bucks for them <laughs> um i restored them and i think they're worth like 1200 dollars. So. you know that's another thing about my buddy sean that he he showed me like um there's an app, and, and he's going to kill me for not knowing it. But, Sean, when you listen, you can throw this on the YouTube channel comment section. And, by the way, I forgot to say that that's how you win the prize. Leave the comment uh, to the, the answer on the comment section of the YouTube channel. Uh, but he showed me, like, these sneakers and how much they're worth. I mean, it's almost like stocks in a way. Oh, yeah. You know, this pair of Jordans is now, yes, I bought them for this, but now I can sell for 750 mm-hmm. bucks, Or now I can sell these for 1200 yeah. These pa- it, that. It, it's crazy. It, I mean, it's 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 to me, it's amazing that people 
pay that much for something that they're never going to put on their feet. But I guess it's the same with like rare coins and circulation or even guns. People will buy guns, never intend never to shoot them. Yeah. They're going to put them up, they're going to be there, and they're just going to look at them, hold them, clean them from time to time. I was that guy when it came to sneakers. Um, and like you said, it, at the time I didn't look at it like that. I was just grabbing pieces of culture from my youth, right? Like I always wanted this shoe, or I envied the guy that had that shoe, and I would just collect them, and I would go to my closet and racks and racks of shoes and I'd pull a box out and I'd open it up and it'd be brand new and I'd look at it and I'd be like man and then I'd stick it back and everywhere you know the one thing that I just thought about uh guns and Jordans when we were growing up kids were getting shot for their Jordans mm -hmm. you know what I mean but now you don't hear that kids are not getting shot over their shoes no they're getting trampled on release dates <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that, that's, that's what's happening now. that's the difference yeah. right so now you can get the shoes but the cost of the shoe I don't remember what they cost when we were a kid I mean, I remember buying them, and I want to say they were maybe like $100. Or so. yeah. You know, my mom would look at me like, are you, have you lost your mind? Yeah. But now, I mean, you'll pay 225 I mean, the big baller Easy, brand yeah. shoe was what, 495 yeah, almost $500. For that ugly-ass shoe. This is true. Yeah, I said it. So, um, that, but that's interesting how um, you transitioned – you know, shoes, but people people collect things, right? We're we're collectors of baseball cards or guns or sneakers or whatnot. And Sean, did you collect sneakers too? Lord no. <laughs> I don't think he owns a pair of sneakers, honestly. I do own a pair. They're but they're not uh, they're not restored. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so but but um so the art, uh, the restoring the sneakers you were doing, and, and you, that, I mean, that's a big business, right? It was, it, was, it was real huge. I mean, a restoration would be anywhere from 80 to $160. For a the, pair of shoes? To, for me to restore a pair of shoes, and depending on the age and the work that had to be done, it was good money, right? Yeah. Uh, I even hooked up with a guy um, out of South Carolina that does custom shoes for like athletes right and so there for a while i was doing his restorations exclusively like his customers would come to me and then it was a big ig following on instagram for those that don't know and it, it really got huge and then um some things happened in life and it just took a took a took a downward turn and then we segue just out of that all together and i got married and kind of re hit the reset button have you ever seen a pair of your shoes on someone uh, on a celebrity no, not 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 knowingly, right? I didn't know who I got the shoes from when they uh, come from him. So gotcha. there could have been a possibility that someone had a classic pair, um, but not personally. No, I do not gotcha. know that. But now he now he made custom shoes for Thomas Davis and and um, Tyson Chandler and um, done some LeBron James customs for him and things like that. So um, I'm sure I may have touched somebody's at some point in time, but just didn't have the the, the idea. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool. It was a cool industry. And then, so you took your artwork and then transitioned it into a gun holster company. Yeah, more or less. Um, so I, I always loved sneakers, and like I said, I kind of got out of that, got married, and hit the reset button, and uh, was working for a local security company here for about 15 years, and then one day, it's like, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, man, I've been doing this all my adult life. Like, what the fuck do I do now, right? right? Like, artists don't make money unless they're dead. You know what I mean? That's a good point. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you, there's going to be some guys that do some one-off stuff. Mike Walden, we were talking about him earlier. He does awesome paintings. and Yeah, because you were saying he actually created your uh, – help create because yeah. you designed your logo. Yeah. Or tell that story because it's a good story too. Yeah, so, so we'll go back to the Black Flag thing. Um so I lost that job, and then so the sneaker sat there, and you know my wife was like, you know, I was going to a job I didn't want to do, and she's like, one day she just pulled the trigger and said, let's do it, and so that started the business. So I sold a Harley. I was looking at sixty-five pair of shoes I never wore. I cashed those in and made a nice lick off of that to help kickstart the business. Right. right. Um. And, and so we were coming up with ideas and throwing things around, and, and, and I've always been um, admirable of outlaws and, pay, and and pirates and stuff like that, right? Sure. Like, I mean, it, America has a love affair with the gangster, the outlaw. Um, and always so, will. And so that was one of the things that helped create the logo was the skull that, that didn't symbolize any one person or race or creed of color. You know, you had a shield that you stood behind, and then, of course, the flag. And then the 2-6 was paid homage to the old outlaw 
uh, biker gangs, right? As a kid, I didn't know who those guys were. Right. But they would like they would like come visit my grandmother and stuff like sure. that, right? So they would wear these patched up vests and the two six, which stands for Black Flag, which is kind of homage to like you know the one five for Outlaws or eight one for Hell's Angels and things like that. So I kind of incorporate all that like grimy outlaw shit and just swashbuckling stuff and said, all right, let's do a logo. And so I sketched it out and. I had a local company do one, and it was it was it was nice, but it wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. You know, yeah. you knock on them; they they done a great job. And then I, you know, Mike's always been a talented guy, and I was like, I'm gonna reach out to that dude because I know he does some some graphic design. And it was a great marriage. Um, I sent it, sent it out to sketch. He done some work. We went over a couple of revisions, and then I'd say for the last two years. This is the third revision of the logo, but yeah. for the last two years we've been rocking his revision, right? Um, and uh, I mean, guys see it and and they identify who we are, and, and it's it really sticks. It's got like it's meat and potatoes, right? Like that logo is. I ain't gonna say it's like the Nike swoosh, but when you see it, you you know, you know. What, yeah, you know, right? So. What I'm doing here is I'm cheating because I'm going to try to give Mike a plug on his Instagram. You know, and Mike does great stuff. He puts stuff for sale as paintings mm -hmm. on Facebook all the time. Amazing. And uh, people should check him out. Uh, Walden Studios 12 on Instagram yeah. to look at some of his stuff. And um, it's cool that you keep it local, too. Uh, local company, mm -hmm. with uh, local artwork, uh, yourself and Michael um, with the logo. And um, I think that's great. You know, um, I wish I could say the same. I went a different route. I'm gonna ask. Sorry, and I'm cheap as shit. <laughs> so, so we I should have done it, but there'll be revisions. Like you said, you yeah. can always go back and redo your logo Tool and it, tweak evolution. it a little bit, right? You know, it's always gonna evolve. Something's gonna, you know, you've got to stay current with whatever is going on, right? So, yeah, that that will always be the base, but there may be. You know, offshoots of what that is, right? Like that's our meat and potatoes. Like, like you said, if if you see it, you know it, and uh, something that you know we're, we're pretty proud of. You're talking about swashbuckling and outlaws and pirates and stuff, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because I'm pretty sure there was a. Um, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's either a Showtime or an HBO series called uh, Black Sail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the guy who did, I want to say, what's it called? It's not the intro song, but they call. Oops. They call it something. You know, the, um, any rate, he's from Statesville. I'm really? pretty sure he went to Statesville High, and I'm damn almost positive he won an Emmy. That's great. For, for Black Sale. I and some of that. Whoever's listening at home, please leave that on either Facebook or, or Instagram or uh, the YouTube channel, but I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was the... It was the production or whatever you see coming in. Maybe that's what it was. Right. Maybe it wasn't the music. Anyway, he had something to do with that, and I'm pretty sure he won an Emmy for that. It's a great which is, show. Which is pretty cool. It's a great show. I watched season one on vacation. I need to catch up. Yeah. So, but, and that was kind of what, like, like, the most notorious pirate, like, terrorized North Carolina's coast, right? It's a Blackbeard. He's the baddest motherfucker out there. Right? <laughs> that's so right. So, if, if you're going to take on a gun industry that's like $4.5 billion, right, let's have something that's kind of you know, punches them in the face or kicks in the door, right? And that's kind of what we were looking for. So um, it's outlawish. It's, it's kind of unpolished. It's raw. Um, and that's a reflection of who I am. You know what I mean? And, and it, it, we don't conform. So, so, we, so we dig it. Yeah. And you were saying um, earlier that you have um, some people who work in uh, the local law enforcement here, SBI, and even uh, the FBI who yeah. carry your holster. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I know for a fact um, that there's several patrolmen here in the state's police department um, that, that carry some of our product. Uh, Darren Campbell owns a uh, deep cover for, for 43, Glock 43. He carries um, occasionally Captain Hamby, uh, Bill Hamby, uh, carries as well. Uh, we've had several SBI agents uh, stop by the house. Um, which is always fun because the neighbors are like, is he selling drugs or something? And I might yeah. have to go out and like, no, they're here for holsters, right? So <laughs> it, you know, when they pull up in their big vans and it says SBI or ATF or you've got the bloodhound in the back, it, it raises a little flag. So these guys pull up to your house. You have to have the safest house in your neighborhood. I would like to think so. You'd be a fool to... to You'd be a fool to break in. Yeah. But when you see vans with three letters mm -hmm. on the side, that's a house that if you're trying to do some up to some mischief, <laughs> we're going to skip 
We're going to yeah, skip, we'll go that, skip one. Past that yeah. one. Yeah. They've got some shit going on over there. Yeah. So, it, I mean, we made a lot of cool um, connections in the industry uh, sure. in general. Uh, you would be surprised that the people that, that carry them, they may be of a different race or a different, a different color or a religion, but you have that one thing in common. You know what I mean? And it, it brings a lot of people together more than it divides them that the media would let you know, right? Right. I mean, from some of my best friends, you, you know, that maybe – Ten years ago, wouldn't carry. Now do right now. Right. It's important that they have children or, or or things like that or women. Like my wife wasn't a big proponent of firearms, and she really didn't have any choice when she married me because you know that's just part of the fabric of who we are, right? Sure. Um, and so now she's a proficient shooter. She carries every day. Um, my family reunion is almost like a gun show, honestly. <laughs> you know, speaking of outlaw and biker gangs and whatnot, I'm sure you know this, but. Um, I used to love watching, you know, the great biker build off or whatnot and watch Jesse James do what he would do yeah. with um with the motorcycles and West Coast choppers and doing a lot of stuff by hand when a lot of other folks were using some of the more uh technology to their advantage or, or yeah. whatnot. But his craftsmanship, I always appreciated. You know, his bike might have r- ridden a little more rough, possibly, than maybe somebody else's bike. But his was raw. Yeah. It looked great. It oh, was yeah. mostly all but the frame. And sometimes even the frame, he would bang out by hand. Absolutely. But now he has moved in to the gun industry and making his own firearms. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen it or if you had not checked it out at home. You can check it out on YouTube. The guns that he makes are beautiful. Oh, they're hand-forged. I mean, yeah. he is a master. That's not in my price range, but I can appreciate what he's doing, right? Most of them are 1911 builds, and yeah. I think he does some some rifle stuff. Sean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's got his own ammo line now really? and uh, suppressors. Yeah. So he's doing big things, um, and it's cool that he's kind of like myself. He's segued from you know, hand-forging chopper tanks and frames and stuff like that to now he's literally taking a block of steel and pounding it into a 1911. It's crazy scroll work and it's just beautiful beautiful they're almost like works of art if not they are and i don't know if you've seen it or not um but he made i don't i don't know if the president has it Mm -hmm. but he actually made a gun for trump have you seen it yeah that thing is beautiful it it really is whether you like the man or not. whether you like him or not whether you like even jesse james or the president or not you know you gotta appreciate the craftsmanship look at that gun really come on i hope I hope, I i would like to know if you got it I think he does. Actually, actually, he he did receive it, but I do believe when he's a sitting president that it goes into an archive. So for later on, they'll display it. Like they'll he display get, it. Yeah. Right. He's not going to get to keep no, it. No. Right. So it'll be an archival piece, but people will get to enjoy it for years and generations to come, which is really cool. Absolutely. So, um, Sean, you do the concealed uh, carry classes, mm-hmm. right? That's right. Um, and how long have you been uh, involved in teaching concealed carry? Going at it hard since 2013. Since 2013. Um, dabbled in it before yep. a little bit because this is a it's a tough market. There's sure. a lot of guys. I don't badmouth any of them in the area. Yeah. There's a lot of really good ones. Uh, I respect them. Um, they pretty much respect me as well. It's not a, a step on toes kind yeah. of deal. You've, you've always got that one guy. Of course. You know, there's, there's, there's somebody always trying to, to take from you. But it, it's no big deal. There's plenty of us. There's plenty of people. Um. But I started Hunter Safety with, right. with North Carolina, uh, free program for the kids and uh, well and, and adults. <clears throat> Anybody who wanted a, a hunting license, you had to have this class first. Um, you start working with it, then parents start asking, "Do you teach anything else?" And then they said, so, "You know, we can work on some stuff." Then they said, "What about concealed carry?" And I was like, "Not really sure. Let me look into that. Let me see what it's going to take." Um, takes a lot of insurance it takes a lot of headaches but i'm sure um, there's a lot of red tape when it comes to being the person who is responsible for teaching teaching is not bad um being able to control a room is the hard part i've had classes of 100 people um that was 2015 2015 like i said we were slammed um but yeah we've had we've had groups of 100 steady that's, it's hard to keep the attention of that room on a class of law. Oh, I'm sure. Um, it, it's just so dry, so boring. 
Um, but that didn't, you know, like I said, that's 2015. There was a lot of work up to that. You had a lot of days that you went home when you was done and said, you know, I done terrible. Right. Or, or I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Um, and eventually you, you worked on it and, and you get it down pat. And you can almost do it with your eyes closed now. Um, crowd's different, but the same information over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> of course, everybody's different that you're teaching. People have different learning capacities. You right. know, what you're what you're reading, what you're looking at, how to comprehend it. Because um, law law is hard to read, and I have an engineering background, so when I see a number, shit, for me, anything's hard to read. <laughs> if I see a number in something like a law, like a statute, the my brain the whole time as I'm reading this thing, I'm thinking them numbers are going to tie in somewhere to this equation. There's no right. equation; it's a law. It's just written, but it, it messes with me sitting there trying to read it. So I figured out some ways to, you know, make it easier for people, hopefully. Um, Done it for, when it got a little bit bigger, I would say 2014, mid-2014. I'm terrible with dates. Um, I started doing giveaways. Right. um, Trying to draw business. It worked. Um, Giveaways were occasional where then it became more frequent, where every class there was $25 t-shirt, something, because you had shirts back then. And back then the name was not Grayman. It was uh, T&W. Grayman just came around at the end of last year. Well, how did you come up with the name Grayman? That was actually Aaron, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a designer. I, I'm not an artist. Um, I'm a people person. I'll work with people all day long. But right. you want me to sit here and, and grammar police something, you can forget it. You can forget it. Um, yeah. I'm with you. That, that was not my forte. I can barely form two sentences that make sense. Now, math I'm fine at, but grammar, forget it. And we we jumbled some names around. Um, and, and Aaron, we didn't – we got together in 2016. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, didn't know each other from anybody. Right. Wouldn't know each other on the street if we saw each other. Then come to find out back in uh, – what was doing the shop? It's cold. Yeah. January. Yeah, it's probably January. Found out we had a tie. We're not going to mention it, but we had a tie between each other that is just very close. Yeah. That we, how did we never know each other? It was just, we was, it's kind of like if I was walking in, he was walking out. Yeah, it was gotcha. like ships passing the night, but we, you know. <laughs> and this was for years. The connection was really close. Yeah. Um, and so we just kind of connected the dots, and I was like, whoa, man. Yep. So I've, I've, I've seen him when we were younger, yep. right? right, but. And then we kind of just went our separate ways, and then you know, life life has a funny way of bringing you full circle, right? And and I'm a firm believer that the Lord puts people in your lives for purposes, right? Whether it's a short period of time or it's for the long haul, right? right. Um, and I think you know that connection, and then him reaching out to me, and it, it was just kind of meant to be. It was just destiny, or. or or, or, you know, it was just one of those things that just was meant to happen. And so you guys have been working together for how long? Or, or been business partners together for how long? Roughly a year as far as business goes. Yeah. Um, I approached you with a deal, right? Yeah. On doing holster giveaways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm terrible with this stuff. Um, I said, look, I'm I'm doing cash or T-shirts. I want to try to do something else. You're local. You, you make some good stuff. Um, I don't want a thing for free from you. That's not what I'm here for. Let's figure out something. So we met at the uh, Twisted Oak one night. Uh, I left a meeting and, and showed up late, actually. Um, but him and his wife was there, and, and I come in, and we start talking. And I just laid out on the table and said, you know, I don't do contracts. It's handshakes, word of mouth. You cross me, it's going to be bad. <laughs> Fair enough. And I want it the same way. Well, yeah, sure. Um, what's yours is yours. What's mine is mine. And I told him what I was doing, and he said, well, I'll just make it and give it away. And I say, well, you know, you ain't got to do that. That's not what we're here for. Right. But he did, and we've done it for a while, and then the bills just got too too hard. Um, these, these things take molds. Um, and a lot of time, if you if you don't have the mold, and mm-hmm. still off the gun, you still have to do a lot of prep work to the gun if, if, if you can get the gun from the person. So how, do you, how does that work? Like, how do you prep? Yeah, how does that work? Walk me through that. So if you have a firearm, so I'm a, we went through this. So these are all all clear. Yeah, these are clear, you and we check. we all did a, a buddy safety check. Yeah. So, so um, these are unloaded firearms. And so I'll kind of go over what we do to prep certain weapons. 
Um, so, so your main thing is uh, you want that holster to draw smooth, right? Um, and so one of the things you want to block out, of course, is the ejection port, any controls, and then minimize the the depth of the trigger guard, right? So, okay. so when you go to holster that weapon, it locks into place, but it's not going to snag. It's going to draw freely, right? Um, so those are some of the things that we have to do on an actual firearm itself. Now, our molds that we source from several different vendors, um, they come pre-blocked out, right, and make it a little bit easier for us. But anything we custom by hand um, has to be um, has to be be blocked out and, and prepped before going into the press or however the, the holster is made. And for those of you uh, listening and not watching, like you literally just push that in there with one finger. Mm -hmm. Like that's how easy it slid yeah. into your holster. And then what's cool about that, once it's in there... So you're shaking it. Yeah. I mean, you're not... I mean, you're giving it a, a, a vigorous shake. It's not coming out. And then... With the press of a thumb. You know, with the press of your thumb, I mean, it just slides right, right on out. And that's just... Look at that. That's all it is to it. And, and, and that's what I've done. You know, I wasn't just going to push just any Mickey Mouse holster Joe Blow's making in his garage. Right. Um, Even though I was making it in the garage. Yeah, but you're <laughs> you're not Joe Blow. Okay. But, uh, you know, I got one from him, um, tried it out, and... And said, you know, that's that's nice. The price was was real good for it. Um, where everything was in that caliber was still running eighty dollars right. pretty steady. The good thing was his was fully customizable. He could do whatever you want to. You got a light on it, anything he can do it. So do you? And you make these? Um, you make them? You make them by hand, or you customize them by hand? How does that work? Well, so. We get an order right. Um, say it's a Glock 19. Yeah, this one's custom. Yeah, that's a, that's a custom build right there. Um, so we'll say, for instance, I get an order. And it's for Glock 19, and we get these sheets of what they call Kydex or thermoplastics, right? And it's a mm -hmm. flat square sheet. Um, we do the prep work to the firearm, um, and then press it either one or two ways, uh, with a clamshell type press, or we vacuum form them now. Um, and so that embosses you, you heat the codex up to about what, 340. 340 350 somewhere around in there um and then you vacuum form it around around the mm -hmm. firearm um and that creates the holster and then we turn around and we trim and polish and test fit and 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 make it work man and um and it's just a piece of functional it's, art that serves the purpose it, this is know. really lightweight yeah mm -hmm. it sits really close to your body too um you, you could probably just lay it up there and just how minimalized the print is to your body. Like, look how tight. Like, yeah, It's almost like a perfect fit to your hip. Absolutely. Um, and you can set that retention however you want to. You just loosen the screws up. You get it how you want it. Loosen yeah. the screws. Put a little, and count your turns. Get it set where you want it. Put a little um, Loctite in there. Good to get. And that's it. That's it. And so, how long have you been carrying the original holster, Sean? Sorry. No, 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 no. It's a great question. Because uh, they're durable as yeah. I get out. I mean, we're looking at two years now. Yeah. And not, and and I probably made. We're creeping up on two thousand holsters, maybe. Two thousand holsters. Yeah. And you've been in business for roughly three years. Roughly three years. So yeah. in three years, you've made two thousand holsters. Yeah. That's fantastic. It, it, it's it's pretty crazy looking back at what started out as a necessity. That's was there was a lot of sacrifice in the beginning, a lot of long nights, a lot of research, a lot of missed family stuff, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Um but then to kind of look back and, 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 and see everything in the rearview mirror, you know what I mean? It's like I don't have to work as hard as I did when I first started, right? Because the majority of the stuff we have is already in house, right? So we can we can stamp them out, we hand cut them, hand form them. And they're good to go, right? In the beginning, it was a labor of love. It was it was learning what to do, how hot to get your kydex, where do you block the gun out, you know, things like that. Like, how do I make the very best holster I can make? Right. And, and so that's kind of how how it how it happened. So when you're um, so when someone wants to order a holster, typically what's the turnaround time? Uh, so summer was kind of slow. Vacation, kids going back to school, and you right. probably could have got a holster. In about five days from start to finish. From right? start to finish, five yeah. days. Yeah, um, and, and that's 
That's kind of equating whatever's in the order queue at that time, right? So it's pretty light. Right now, I'm out about 7 to 14 days, okay, depending on the build. Um, most of our local people, though, I try to take care of those guys first, right? Sure. Like, if you're in Statesville and you want a holster, give me five days and we'll get you squared away. Like, I want you to carry it. I want that local person to carry it before anybody else carries it, right? Because Statesville's my people. Like, right. Like, my wife people blood. safe, right, right, right. But not only that, but if you're going to support me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reciprocate that and and make sure you have what you need, right? Uh, that's just the kind of guy I am. So, um, so right now we're about seven to fourteen days on standard builds. Anything custom, you're looking at roughly maybe twenty one, but that's if we have to get something crazy, right? Like a custom print, I have to send off and it get shipped to me or something like that. But so. When you say a custom print, do you have anything here with you that's kind of custom? That's what like design wise, or I, I did can't... not bring anything. We we do about any color of the rainbow, right? Um, okay. I've got some in in house. We've got multi cam, zombie green, bubblegum pink, Tiffany blue, purple, uh, carbon fiber, which is really cool. Yeah, so we so we've done some really cool carbon fiber shit. Um, both black, red, um, blue. Uh, we do a lot of gunmetal gray stuff. I'm a mute color guy, right? I don't want a lot of flash. Yeah. So it's black, gray, or um, OD green. I, I really like that. Those just kind of mute colors. I don't want people, I don't want to draw attention to myself, right? Even when I carry outside the waistband. Um, so we do carbon fiber. We do fabric textured stuff where that's uh, you'll have some kind of Kadora fabric over top of the Kydex. And, a Kadora? Yeah. It's now, I know what a Fedora is, but what's the Kadora? So, so Kadora is like a military grade... Um, material, right? It's it's moisture wicking. It's very very tough, and it's just another way to kind of step your holster up. I mean, is it necessary? No. Does it make it look cool? Well, fuck yeah, right? You know, what I mean? <laughs> uh, right. Uh, but not to limit it to that, um, we have material that looks like leather. It has the grain and the veins, and but it's but it's Kydex, and and it looks just like a leather holster. You got a deep brown. You've got a a light tan, like a like a gunfighter type holster, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, and then, and then, and then we do some off the wall stuff where you have a uh, cryptex camo. I was going to uh, ask, cause someone asked for something just like off the wall, bizarre, weird or exotic yeah. where you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Man, I, that's the cool thing about it is like, it don't matter what it is. Like I've done my, my own logo on a holster, but if you had, I'm just, I'm going to go to the extreme, but if you had, you want to throw your family dog on one, we can do that. Right. I mean, literally. So, um, sports teams, you want the logo on your holster? If you're that kind of guy, or gal, we'll make that happen to you, man. So. That ha- there has to be uh, a market for your favorite team's logo holster. There has to be because people go nuts for their team oh, stuff. Oh, absolutely. Man. I mean, you know, and and most of those are are tools that the guy's going to take to the range. You know, he's, right. he's not necessarily going to carry it on a daily basis, but you know, when you're around a bunch of people and, and you kind of want to flash, you got a, maybe a, a high end gun, maybe something like. Again, this is clear, but maybe like a Glock 19. It's got the armor and the light, the suppressor sights, and the cutouts and stuff like that. You want to throw that in a cool holster that just draws your eye to that weapon, right? Again, I'm a, I'm a mute color guy, so I'm just going to go with black. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, custom stuff is always a big a, a big draw, and really in, in, in whatever you do, whether it's cars or um, decor or whatever, you know, it's a piece of the person that you're putting into the holster. You know what I mean? It sure. reflects their personality, I guess. And if, um, what does the price range of the holsters range from roughly? Um, so good question. So like, here's our basic, and this is for a small single stack. Um, this right now on our site, uh, with a standard one and a half, uh, belt clip to one and three quarter inch belt clip is 40 bucks plus, plus tax. Okay. Uh, so the cool thing about those is, is we warrant them as long as you own the gun, right? If you tear it up, run over it with a truck, you lose something, we replace it absolutely free. Uh, so we warrant it for the life of the gun. Damn, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then our high ends, um, can go all the way up to about 140. Okay. Uh, depending on if you want like a vehicle mount or something that's multi-purpose, like um, say you know for one instance, I've done a a build for a guy who runs a taser. He's a bounty hunter, right? So he wanted to be able to run that platform on a vest, right? Switch it to um, a, a belt, a war belt, and then ultimately have the ability to mount it under the dash, all with one piece of hardware. 
but it's multi-purpose, right? It's modular. Um, so, so builds like that can get a little involved. Um, and, and, and I really don't try to hit nobody over the head, man, because like I was like, I know what it's like to work forty hours a week, right? And sure. every penny counts, right? And I want that purchase to be the ultimate purchase. Like you don't have to worry about, you know, pumping out fifty, sixty dollars for a holster because I'm gonna stand by. It's not gonna leave my shop unless I don't carry it myself, right? Right. Um, but you don't have to worry about it. it's the last sixty dollars. Even if we upgrade, so like in my my production changes and we do something completely different. If you're not satisfied with that last generation. Man, hit me up. Let's make it happen. Let's get you something new, right? Like, That's crazy. I mean, that it seems like a – I mean, I don't know a lot of warranties. I mean, if my refrigerator stops running, you know, after 90 days, I'm screwed. i got to go buy another refrigerator. But literally, if I run over this with a semi, you're like, all right, well, I'll get you a new one, you know? Yeah. That doesn't happen. It, it, it doesn't. And so we live in a weird society, right, where social media, like you can have one bad review and it can just kill you, right? Which is crazy because it really truly is. a Google review can – it can destroy you, right? right? It's like an Eminem free stop. He comes after you, your career's over. <laughs> I, I'm just that's that's the way social media is. Like that's the way if somebody is not satisfied, then and then they'll they'll trash you, and then your name's garbage, right? So, so I've got to go because I can't compete with the Phobuses or the Safari Lands, and and we're not trying to, right? But I want to be able to at least stand behind my product, right? Until I am at that level, if we ever get there, you know what I mean? And we may and we may not, and that's cool, but. I believe in what I do, and I want you to, to rest assured that when you put that thing in your pants or on your hip, that you don't have to worry about it. You know, that's kind of the nice thing about having uh, local and smaller smaller shops uh, like yours is people, their your name means everything. Yeah. Right? And so if word spreads around that you have a bad product or bad customer service or whatever, it doesn't take long, and then people stop stop coming. That's it. That's right? It. That's all it takes. So now, um, with with you two guys, um, do you guys go to a lot of gun shows? Do you show your product at gun shows? We, you know, I'm, I'm, we had thought about that, and, and the short answer is no. The long answer is, is you got a guy that, like Sean had mentioned earlier, that's in his garage, and he's he's making shit. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, right? right. He's just going to take your money because that's all he cares about, right? Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the time and I'm going to make a nice, a nice fucking holster, right? I'm going to put my heart and soul into this thing, right? And I'm going to make sure it runs right. And it's not going to be a blob or a void. It's, it's going to fit the gun. It's going to, you know, it's going to be perfect, at least to my standard, right? Mm -hmm. So my price may be a little bit higher, but the common guy that doesn't know anything about firearms or maybe just getting into it, he sees that twenty dollar holster and he's like, Well fuck yeah, I just bought a seven hundred dollar gun, here's twenty bucks. Right. You know, and that that's just the mindset of people, right? If you're gonna invest in a firearm that could potentially save your life, wouldn't you wanna put it in something that's gonna protect it, not only the firearm, but your person, right? So so the most most common injuries are self self inflicted when it comes to firearms. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but it's either sticking your finger in the trigger well or getting something caught in it or debris. Um, you know, just stupid shit, right? That's plastic burst, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, honestly. I mean, who wears their gun inside their sweatpants? And so do you walking upstairs to the club. Why are you doing that? And do you do you really want to twist Trust a twenty dollar holster on a seven hundred dollar gun? You know what's crazy? I just thought about this. How many people go out and bought the new iPhone? X, and I bet you the case that they put it in wasn't twenty bucks. Oh, I know it was right. But Verizon will sell none cheaper than fifty. Right for a phone. Right. So they're going to put their firearm in something cheap, but they would not dare put that machine little device that we're all addicted to yeah. in anything. Yeah, man. Cheap. It's, that's just the way like we're wired now. It's like this. I, I don't know, man. Like I would so much rather have this in my in my pants pockets than this any day, right? Like, yeah, that this one's going to help you much more than absolutely. that if in a bad situation. Yeah, or any situation. It depends on what side of the damn fence you're on. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And that's that's the truth. But you know. So um, I was wondering if you guys had been to gun shows. Would it be hard for you to become a vendor at a gun show? No. no. You pay a booth Is that easy? Fee. Just a booth yeah, fee? you buy a booth fee. You can sell anything. At the gun show? Oh, yeah. So that brings me to a question I had about, like, you hear people uh, – wanting to close the gun show loophole and i had a uh show about this a few probably two months ago or so or a month ago and we were talking about the eric church um his comments in rolling stone but we internally myself kevin and Bo, had a conversation of you know well what are the loopholes that they're discussing 
that need to be closed. And it was my understanding, and I think we even Googled it on the show, that you have to be a licensed, and I forget, again, the, the initials for the license, but you have to... FFL. Yeah. FFL. You have to, be, you have to have that license in order to be a vendor mm-hmm. at a gun show in order to sell the guns. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, now, again, it's my understanding. Let's say that we're at a gun show, and I am I have my FFL, mm-hmm. and you want to buy a firearm, mm-hmm. and I can't sell you that because I'm not uh, inside the show for whatever reason. Like, maybe, uh, maybe you don't have your ID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But now, I... As a citizen, we can go to the parking lot or across the street, and now we can. I can sell you the firearm, and we can write it down on the piece of paper, and I keep it, and you'll keep it. Mm-hmm. You can do it that way. That, that comes back to being a non-registry state. In North Carolina, there's no registry on firearms. Mm-hmm. Where New York, where I've taught people that have moved down here from New York, yeah. they show me their concealed carry card. I mean, our concealed carry card is a laminated library card, essentially. I yeah, mean, it's absolutely. Nothing to it. Um, New York, every time you buy a new gun, you get a new card because on the back of that card is listed every gun and serial number that you own. Or it's, carry. Or right. carry. Yeah. Well, from what I understood, it was what you own is what the person told me. But now I might be wrong. I mean, that's... But I did see the card and I saw yeah. names, serial numbers, everything on the back of it. On the back of the card. Uh-huh. And uh, every time you get a new one, you get a new card. Huh. But so, is that the loophole that people are talking about? Or is there some other... Because I don't think, again... They call it straw purchase. Yeah. What does that mean? Straw purchase goes one of two ways. Straw purchase goes where you don't want to go through the hassles of getting a permit. I know you. Yeah. Um, you don't want to go get your, your permit. You don't want to go get your concealed. I say, you know, he's, as far as I know, he's not been in trouble. He ain't got no issue. You sure. say, here's $500. I want that SIG. Right. And... I go in and buy it, I come out and give it to you. That's a straw purchase. Now, you can gift a gun all day long with close family, mother, father, wife, okay. brother, whatever. Um, but the friend deal, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed and, and to And that's, that's where it comes in. Yeah. Well, how hard is it to say that? How hard is it for the media or the people or the congressman standing up there pounding on a podium for 10 hours talking about closing a loophole how hard is it just to pinpoint that one out and call it what it is? Like that literally took thirty seconds to explain. It's it's a misdirection, right? Because it's easier to attack an inanimate object than it is to nowadays to assume responsibility or say, "Hey, this guy was in the wrong" or "This gal was in the wrong." Right? Like you can demonize the tool all you want, but it's only intent or as good as the person that wields the tool whether it be a hammer a screwdriver a rifle or a pistol right so like you sell a gun the guy over the counter he doesn't know what's in that man's heart right sure like, you know i can tell you there are far more better guys with a gun or or, or or good guys with a gun than there are evil guys with a gun right i mean i think there's over 300 million guns in the united states yes um you know and and and, and opioids kill 60,000 a year. More a year than, than firearms. And, right. and everybody wants to jump on this firearm attack, but it's the cowards that go into these um, no-gun zones where there are ducks on a pond or they're shooting innocent children, right, or uh, concert venues and where people cannot defend themselves because they, they don't have the right to carry on that premise, right? And it makes it easy. Like, who wouldn't want to do that? You don't see these guys going to police stations or, or places where they're highly armed. Um, even some military bases, you, only certain personnel can carry firearms, right? And I know Fort Hood may have been one where the, the, the guy uh, done a, a shooting or the Naval Yard, but most of those guys don't carry a weapon unless they're ordered to do so or on duty at that, that particular time. So, But even um, with the Fort Hood shooting, the guy who shot, um, um, I can't remember his name, but there were red flags, but people didn't report it Yeah, because of... PC. Or you go back to the Parkland kid. Uh, he had been reported several times. There was YouTube comments. The FBI had been involved. And and, and, and and that's where we're dropping the ball, man, is on the background checks and the vetting. It's like, you know, the, all those could have been prevented to some shape or form, right? Um, I'm not a proponent of every teacher maybe being armed, but there has to be some SRO or somebody there that's willing yeah. to, to, to stand up for these innocent children or these people that, that cannot defend themselves right like that's your god-given right just to defend yourself 
you know, it's a shame that we even have to have the discussion of teachers possibly arming themselves, right? And maybe it's one of those things to where not every teacher arms himself, but maybe they consult with gray man um, concealment. And guess what? If a teacher wants to do that, they do. Or maybe the school system looks at uh, retired veterans or someone who's home Absolutely. and they – uh, with the school system or the state or wherever the funding is because I, I can't help but think that the money's there even to pay our teachers more and to provide resources to keep our kids safe, oh, okay? So it's there. You know, someone just has to come off the money and write the check. So maybe that's one way to help with our um, vets who come home who are unemployed, and it also keeps our kids safe because I, fi I would find it very hard to believe that if I was a disgruntled kid or – someone out there who is wanting to do harm with a gun that I'm going to go into a place that I know has a resource officer and a, a veteran there who is armed to stop, you know, bad things from happening. At least be a mental de deterrent, right? Like you yeah. want to think twice about your action. Like sure. If I know I can go in with no impediment, Hell yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, that's just the green light. Let's just go for it, right? I mean, so there's got to be some kind of checks and balances. There's got to be some something in place that's, that makes you think twice. Um, and, 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 and since the beginning of time, I mean, there's always going to be evil, right? And what, what do you meet violence with but with violence, right? And there's got to be somebody on the other side that's ready to reciprocate that at any given time. You know what I mean? Like some guys run away. When the shit hits the fan, some guys run to it, and, right. and 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 thankfully, most of the guys that run to it are, are carrying something, right? I, I don't know a lot of guys that don't respond to some type of tragedy that don't believe in the Second Amendment. So, um, I, I'm certainly one of those guys for sure. It would also be nice too, I would think, if the media provided um, as much fair cover. I like fair, right? And I know it's it's just not it's hard to it's find not reality. Day, man. But it'd be nice if they would showcase, you know, the good guy with a gun who stopped uh, either an attack or stopped a robbery or stopped a home invader or something of that nature and stop reporting on, you know, things that go wrong with firearms all the time. You know, because, again, you can look at the statistics and you can look at those numbers, but the, what is it, I think cause of death per year is around 30,000 from a firearm. Mm -hmm. However, I believe the number is 18,000 of those. Maybe it's 11,000. It's either 11 or 18,000. It's from suicide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a huge number of oh, the 30. Yeah. And then it also takes into effect police involvement shooting either from the police or someone shooting at the police and then becoming uh, you know, fatally injured. Mm -hmm. So it's not just 30,000 people die a year from firearms. Yes, but you have to break it's, – it's, it's, it's more difficult than that. It's not just that simple. Yeah, so, so I know the CDC done um, a study on this, I think, when the Obama administration was in office. Um, and, I, and from what I understand, it was done to kind of show where we were with the gun violence. Mm -hmm. And honestly – it kind of just backfired on the whole deal because it conveyed what you absolutely said, right? Like 80% of those are either self-inflicted or they're suicides, right? Right. 16%, um, I think, of those are um, police involvement. You know, the other 12% might be, um, you know, crime. I, right. I shoot you, you know, or some type of heat of passion murder or something like that, right? So, so before that, the numbers were skewed, uh, skewed rather, um, and you didn't get the full perspective of, of what it was. Even so, there, there's m much more problems that need to be addressed in the United States other than gun control, right? And the reason why I say this is as long as you have the Second Amendment, that keeps all the other amendments free, right? Because they, they want to take your guns away, the next thing you know, they want to shut you up, right? You, right. Can, you can't say that, not here. Uh, well, we don't like your religion, so... And it's not so much, yeah, yeah, I mean, our forefathers probably didn't didn't foresee us having automatic weapons, but there was probably somewhere in there was like, you know, in order for us not to repeat history, we need this in place so we can remain free, right? Right. There's not many countries in the world that allow free speech, freedom of religion, you know, freedom to carry. Um, there's some that are very restrictive, Canada being one of those, Mexico, uh, the country. Of I mean, Mexico. I'm pretty sure in Canada you can't carry a butter knife. 
Yeah, I mean, so so and and then and then your speech is isn't limited. So like like that's the checks and balances, right? Like this is what keeps us on a level playing field with tyrannical government, right? That like then you always say, well, they got tanks and they got all this and that. That's not how that works, right? They're not just gonna go carpet bomb your neighborhood, right? You know what I mean? It's not how it works, but but it does keep checks and balances in place where we can remain a free people, and you know, and it's different than when I was a child because. You know, like I said, it was a fabric of who we were, right? And now you've really got to say, you got to really raise your kids the right way and say you got to hold these certain inalienable rights true sure. or you'll lose them. Right. And, and I think that's where we're at today. Like we're at a crossroads where you, you got to get on or you got to get off, man. Well, you have to be careful today too, not only with our Second Amendment, but the First Amendment freedom of speech because I don't want to use the word attack, but everything now, you got to be careful with mm-hmm. what you say because if the wrong person takes it the wrong way or puts a certain twist on it, I mean, you know, I mean, I have a, you know, I have a little boy and a little girl, you know, and I'm going to eventually have to have the conversation with them. Like if he likes a little girl, like in 15 years or 13 years or whatever, how does he approach said girl that is not offensive. What can he say to her in a way that lets him know that, you know, because you can't say, hey, I like your shoes anymore because that's microaggression, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't, he can't open the door possibly for a young lady because it's that would chauvinist. be chauvinistic, yeah, right? Yeah. And why would he think that she would want him to open that door? <laughs> so it's like, you know, what the fuck do you do? I mean, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to have to navigate those waters for him. And I don't know, I, you know, but the same thing for a girl, you know. Look, this guy, you're going to have to figure out who, you know, who's, you know, a guy with really bad intentions and it's okay to have the door open for you. You know, he should treat you with a level of respect. And just for anyone listening, if your kid shows up later on, I'm going to make it real hard for him. Like he's not going to like me and nor should he. But agreed. Agreed. Right. So I just think we got to be careful. These slopes are so slippery in raising kids today because I don't want to raise a bunch of assholes or a serial serial killer. Right. right? But I also don't want to raise kids who are who are pushovers, who have to have a safe space, who have to have a coloring book to get over a difficult situation. You know what I'm saying? You know, I told them no or they failed a test or will they even be able to fail tests when they get older? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's a valid because their point. egos can't handle it. That's a valid point, and it's like I tell my kids. And, and I'm going on a rant, sorry. So my daughter, she's she's not really into firearms, but my son, he's formed his own opinion about guns, and he's pretty Second Amendment. And so I'm, and, and and going back to your statement, I think it starts in a home, right? Like you 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 gotta you you gotta fuck the trend, right, man? Like who gives a fuck what they say, right? This is how I'm raising my children, right? Right. Is yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. You're going to be courteous. You're going to treat people with respect, regardless of race, religion, or color. That's just who I am, right? Right. And for every action that you do, and unfortunately I had to learn this the hard way, there is a reciprocating action, whether it be good or bad, right? There's consequences for everything you do, right? Um, if you don't make the team, well, tough shit. Right. You know, work harder. Work right? harder. Um, if the girl don't like it, well, tough shit. Cast another line. You know what I mean? Sure. Like That's just the way life is. And, 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 I, and I say it. Once you get out of school, it doesn't get any easier, right? No, that's when like, that shit gets hard. Your fucking egos are crushed when you get out of high school, right? Like, you have your little cliques and things like that, and life's all great and stuff, but, man, it's brutal out here. And, and you just got to raise tough children, you know what I mean? And, and if you lose some, you lose some. If you win some, well, you cherish those, but, you know, you also learn learn from the losses, right? And, right. and that's just the way you got to you gotta keep going, man. Like, you don't get a trophy for participating in everything. And as a fact, matter of fact, when my son used to get those, we would throw those things away. I was like, well, I want you to look at it because this is not where I, you want to be. You you want to have the championship, right? So let this be your motivation, not your – don't rest your laurels on a, on a participation trophy. Like, that's that's not who we are. We don't, we don't settle for that. Good for you. Yeah, I don't – I don't. my wife and I both are on the same page with that. Yeah. And that, that's another – do you have any kids, Sean? No. Well, man, enjoy everything that you want to do now. <laughs> <laughs> Binge on Netflix – Sleep in, take naps, go on vacation, enjoy it. Because when those wonderful little creatures come into your life, I mean, it's a game changer and it's wonderful. Man, like we just went to the beach. Oh my God, it was great. What a wonderful time. It was work. There was no vacation involved in that. It was wake up, work, and work all day. And then when they go to bed, you know, you're still doing what you have to get done. But, um, they're wonderful. They're a lot of fun. But it changes your perspective on stuff, you know? Like, I have to think about when they go to school. And it's a shame that you have to think about 
school safety and is there a resource officer at that school does that school have safety locks that are going to be on the door that are are, because they have this thing now right now maybe they have mccool springs but like shooter safety doors or something Mm -hmm. where they hit something and the door is locked right they have some that's rhino barricades i think um, maybe that's what it is Rhino cool springs uh, i think uh darren campbell had done some some fundraising with the uh pto down there and so they got those rhino locks that the teachers can deploy in case something happens i think you've also got to because again the, the world is just not a nice place right so you have to to get real with your kids right like i teach my kids certain safety things that they can do in case a shooter uh was to enter the school um if you're inside a room then that's probably the safest place to be but if you cannot then throw your book bag on the mm. opposite way to where the books if he's shooting a low caliber type firearm the chances of survival vastly increased with just that one piece of you know you know thought process right put my back book bag on the front of me and at least protect my vitals right so so those are some of the things that, that i teach our children um god I, I just it's crazy that we're even talking about this because that wasn't how we were you no, know we, we dealt with that. it with, with 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 two fists and yeah. nine times out of ten it was settled you may have to hit the hit the dude up a second time to whoop his ass just to make sure he got it right. through <laughs> but after that you know what i'm saying right. you were done you know and, and it's not like that today so you got kids that are pissed off and their own antidepressants and they're just fucked up in their head and they're they're either a they don't get enough attention or they're not raised right right or the father's out of the home whatever the situation may be that now it's everybody else's fault like i'm you know what i mean like sure so why not take it out on the people that i just have disdain for the most you know what i mean co-workers classmates and it's just it's just a crazy society that that we live in well so. i think a lot of it now is parents use television and video games as babysitters well you're absolutely right get off the bus there on the tv or on the computer or, or whatever where we didn't have that growing up no, uh, sure. went outside. you yeah. had a lot of stuff to do and you got your butt whooped for whatever you done wrong yeah sure I now you know, tore up. <laughs> that just don't happen it's hard right i mean look we're it's it's so hard to navigate the waters right because you have a little kid Let's say they're two, like my, my son, right? So he right now, he loves to, to slap, like he's popping, right? So it's like, okay, well, I can't pop him. Well, I can on his bottom and say, you don't hit daddy. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I just told you not to hit, but I hit you. And then you hit me back. So it's like, is this a game? Like, okay, so let's try time out in the corner. Maybe you're too young for me popping your bottom for you to understand. Now, wait a minute. You know, it's this positive. I don't know. So, but I can tell you this, you put either one of them kids in the corner, man, they are devastated. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's, I I definitely spank my kids. Um, Well, they're they're two, so it's kind of hard to say. They're wearing a diaper, so I'll pop their little diaper. But they don't even cry. You know, they look at me, and they're like, huh. But if I say time out, oh, man. He Tom. takes that toy and he runs. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, as, as long as no, you, no, no corner. You know, and not to get on child rearing because there's no book or no guide for that, especially when you're like young parents. I think I've probably failed every parental thing there was. But, I'm sure me and my wife are failing. Yeah. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta be consistent, right? Like, you, you, wrong is wrong and right is right, and there's no, there's no gray, and there never was. You know, what yeah. I mean? like. You can't make it okay to do one thing and then it not be okay the next time around. Like, you've got to be white or black. You know, as long as you do that and, and you're morally sound and, 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 you know what I'm saying, and you do the right things because they learn from actions, not from words, right? So if you love your wife and you treat her with respect, your son's going to do the same thing and vice versa sure. with your wife, right? They just they, they just gravitate to that, um, which kind of goes back to what I was saying about my son Bryson was like I, I never pounded in his head pro gun this that you know make your own decision you're your own man right like I'm not gonna stop your thought process as far as that goes and he's rather intelligent when it comes to politics um, he leans a little 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 right I would call him a libertarian because he's pro constitution but those are things that, that he gravitated towards like I didn't say you have to be a gun loving nut you have to right. hunt and fish you, you know you da, 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 you know stand for the flag and no like you know be free be free of thought right because sure. that's the, the best thing a man or woman can have is be free free spirited and free thought right and then be true to who you are and 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 make conscious decisions and, and just understand that going back to what I said earlier that whether right or wrong there's going to be repercussion. Right. 
and, and, and be willing to accept that loss and be willing to relish that victory. Because um, that's what life is all about. It's, it's ebb and flow, right? It's ups and downs. You, know? you have to have a little bit of um, – you have to have failure. You have to have tough times Absolutely. to understand that you're, you're in a good time or recognize something positive. Otherwise, you have no clue, right? Absolutely. There, there needs to be struggle. You know, I mean, look, it's not fun going to the gym and working out every day or every other day or four days a week. But it's a struggle, and it's good to struggle, and it's good to try something new, and it's good to have it, like for myself, a, trying something new and a new soreness, you know, or learning something new. Like, look, hey, I've never been behind a microphone and talked before. It's something new for me, and uh, I enjoy it. It seems to be going fairly well, you know. Uh, people seem to enjoy it. But it's something, it's a challenge, yeah. you know. Um, face them. Try something new. Learn something new. Challenge yourself. Yeah, it's good. It's good to keep the mind sharp, too. Maybe that's why I should have been doing this a long time ago, man. Because I'm about as dull as a rock upstairs, but that's okay. Um, so, uh, do you, how often, uh, Sean, do do you offer the concealed carry classes? And if people were looking for this, they can find you on Facebook, Facebook right? Mm-hmm. And that yep. is at Gray Man Concealment LLC. Concealment LLC on Facebook. Yep. So. Um, it's normally once a month. Um, I had to have surgery back in August, so I canceled that class. Um, plus, like you said, the summer's dead, yeah. mostly. Um, carried the people over mostly to, to this class, and it's filled up a, a good bit more. But I've got one this Saturday. Um, I always try to keep the, the, the price low, not trying to outprice everybody. But when you own your own stuff, you can do a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You can flex things around a little bit because uh, I don't have to rent a range. I just, you know, every once in a while we got to replace wood on it. We got to paint lines. Because you have your own range, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I also have another range in Dallas, North Carolina. Really? Yep. Uh, at a um, auction house. It's a huge auction house. It has a restaurant in it. So an auction house, <laughs> restaurant, f- shooting range. Yep. And that's the South, right? <laughs> yeah, man. You get it all. Only thing you're missing is, uh, you know, a, a distillery in the back. There might be, be one down there. I don't there, know. There could, there be, could one. be one. No, Phil's a good, good guy. Um, he didn't know me from anybody. I went to an auction down there one night and uh, was just looking around and uh, got friends with him, actually. Just, well, more acquaintances than friends. Friends is a little bit deeper. But uh, just went up to him and said, uh, you ever thought about holding class here? And he said, I've had a lot of people talk about it. nobody ever showed up or followed through with it. And right. I said, okay, well, this is what I'll offer you. And he said, all right, that'll work. You know, that's fine. And I about had to beat the man and take money from me. I mean, he's just, he's honest as anything. But uh, build a 20-person range down there. Uh, I've got a 14 in Stony Point. Um the only thing we can do down there is pistols. That's how we do is pistol class down yeah. there. It's a limited schedule down there. Um, I go a few times a year down there. We okay. try to do it kind of monthly, and he's got a season that he sells. He closes down in the summertime. Um, so I, I, I need to get down there and actually set one up here soon. But, we, uh, you know, it gets people in his door to right. see what he's got going on. Sure. Um, gets you a little bit of exposure down there. This is – the area that's been real good to me. I've tried to be good back to the people, to the communities. Um, house fire, uh, cancer, whatever, we'll try to raise some money for it, whatever yeah. we can do. Um, just done a uh, disabled person hunt Saturday. Uh, worked with uh, Hands of the Sportsman. It's a group out of Salisbury. Okay. Uh, they come up to Taylorsville. We had 30 hunters. Uh, it ranges from wheelchairs to... I mean, just really anything, any kind of disability. But it's not all, its not only children for the hunt. It's adults, too, that just, if they want the experience, they can get it. And uh, give them guides. You know, people people work to get these, these uh, food plots and try to get deer in there right. for one day. So we had 30 kids and got 19 deer. Wow. Um, and it didn't cost the families anything. We had people from New York, Texas. It's, they it's came a, all the way down here to do the hunt? Yeah, for one day. And, and is there another one of those hunts coming up? Not in Taylorsville. Uh, it, it will spread out throughout the state. Um, 
It's a pretty big organization. It is. It is. And what's it called again? Hands of the Sportsman. Hands of the Sportsman. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody in that group is really good. Um, You know, they'll they'll do anything they can to accommodate. And and that was one thing with the wildlife, uh, working with them. If you had a classroom, just say, say we was teaching in here, and we can't get a wheelchair through that door. And there was a kid showing up in a wheelchair. And that's part of their questionnaire when they're, they're signing up. Do you have any handicaps or anything like that? Right. The state will find you a place to teach that is wheelchair accessible. You know, if you say, hey, I don't, this is all I've got, but I've yeah. got somebody with a wheelchair coming, they'll find you a spot. They'll find you a spot. Yep. And, and didn't you have, um, you in the hands of the sportsman done a, like a fun day at yeah. the range at the beginning back, of the summer, uh, right? Back in June, we had them out. I've got a pond and, and plenty of room to do anything. Uh, brought the the invite the children we had a we had a kid come from goldsboro yeah, four hours away yeah uh, i was really shocked but most of them were pretty local um but they had archery um we had an instructor come out for archery we had crossbows bb guns um a shed hunt deer antlers we had we go look for deer antlers that have felt. felt we, okay. we had a bunch like, of them. I have no idea. We what mowed a spot these. down <laughs> out in the woods, and uh, we go out there and toss them, and let them go find them. So it's an you. Easter egg hunt with deer horns. I got you. Um, had lunch and then fishing, and a company. They're going to shoot me if I don't remember the name, but I, I'm not going to even try. But anyway, they donate some money, and so we got fishing rods, That's good ones. Cool. And what they didn't know was on their way out was they got to keep them. Oh, so they got to keep the rods. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's little things. You, you can't you can't buy guns for them, you know, right. you give them guns and stuff like that. But, you know, you do whatever you can. And these, these guys that checked in, they had, they got uh, Kershaw knives the other day. They got shirts, hats. I mean, just... I ain't sure what I was in that bag. But it's also good that these kids are getting outside and they're learning something. Mm-hmm. And like like we were talking about earlier, kids today are stuck in the machines and the iPads mm-hmm. and the Xboxes and all that other stuff. And they're not getting outside and learning stuff. Yeah, and, and Dave, the guy, David, who started it, uh, his thing was one of the big things. And the biggest story he tells, and the girl was up there, they gave her a rifle the other night. And she was going through a hunting show, uh, you know, like a, the deer classic or something like that where mm-hmm. they sell items showing off the new equipment she had on her camouflage going through in her wheelchair and he's like you know what do you hunt just making small talk with her she said nothing I don't, I don't go and he said why not I said well i'm in a wheelchair i can't he said well, yeah you can and he got her out there so i mean we, we get relationships with these people um like the hunter i had was from um the hickory area one of my buddies he had one from catawba and uh, they didn't get no, they didn't shoot any deer, but they have a chance to come back because they're local. Okay. You can come back, and, you know, we'll work something out. So, so do you work, uh, do you work with them directly or, um, or is it through your, through your class that you offer that you are with this organization? Actually, uh, they brought it to the area last year. And I was late on finding out about it. And then I contacted, I said, you know, I want to do something. I want to okay. get in it. Um, I said, you know, this is what I do. This is what I don't, you know, at the state with the, the hunter safety and stuff right. like that. Um, children, disabilities, doesn't matter. I just want to do it. I just want to get out there. And, uh, you know, the, the guy that's kind of over the, the Taylorsville spot, Guy Mundy, he he was all on it. And we set up a, a, a youth day at my place. And it's, you know, they go off what they, the means that they have. Right. And you, you can't spend a lot of money on this stuff because there's no money there. Right. Um, so it's property owners. What you got, what you can do, what you can offer. And the biggest thing is clear open property, you know, to, to hold a youth day. Yeah. Um, the, the fishing was a plus. They enjoyed it. And that was kind of their exit. You went and fished if you got tired of fishing because it was second or third week of June. It was hot. Um, you get tired of fishing, you go home. You is know, there a place where people can find information, like a website? That would be uh, handsofasportsman.org. Handsofasportsman.org. And they are on Facebook. You can you can Google Hands of a Sportsman. Um, all for, that stuff for more information. Yep. And is your um, holster, uh, I don't want to call it a plant, 
But do you manufacture these at at the property where the, mm-hmm. the gun range is located? Yeah. And, and that's in Stony Point. Absolutely. Yeah. County line road. Things happen out Stony Point. County line road. I know where County line road is. Yeah. Stay off so, of it. <laughs> and so, just kind of adding to what Sean and his part with Hands of Sportsman, and for a lot of these kids, this is like the only opportunity they get out to do certain things like this, right? You know what I mean? So it's a once in a lifetime deal, and a I think it's very commendable that we have someone local that's willing to invest the time and 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 maybe show the the less fortunate that there are other things that you don't have to be bound to that machine or that chair. Or, yeah. And you can still live life. And, and there's people out here that are, are good folks that are willing to facilitate that for you. So that's uh, that's really cool. I think Saturday. I'm guessing. Don't hold me to it. Somebody was there and counted. Don't shoot me for the number. I think we had between. At lunchtime, 400 people, roughly, at the East Taylorville Church. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to look. You have the hunter. Right. And if they have mother, father, so if you got 30, you're now at 90. Right. If you have brother, sister, then you have your volunteers. We had, we, we had kitchen help volunteers. I, I left out at 4 o'clock or 4, 4.15 to meet my hunter at 5.00. Uh, I need to make sure I had everything together. I left out, met him at the church, picked him up. We went hunting, come back, 10-ish. It, it was pretty warm. Yeah. Um, and you, the thing is, when they put you, when you're with that person, you do anything they want to do. If they want to walk over here and walk in circles, you're going to go over and walk in. I mean, you're with that person. They do, you do whatever you can for them. They need something to drink, their, their plate, you know, whatever they need with their handicaps. Um, so you had the volunteers. I mean, it was, it was a, a huge load of volunteers. They, uh, fried a bunch of crappie. A guy donated, he mm-hmm. went fishing and caught crappie and, and filleted them and sat down there and fried them. You had a ton of, of help as, as long, as well as guides. Um, cause each, each hunter had one to two guides depending on disability and right. stuff like that, severity. But, we uh, that's a lot of people to feed, and then they oh, yeah. fed uh, whatever was left over. They went and fed the police department with it, and I left there at ten thirty, eleven o'clock Saturday night. So I mean, they started at four a.m. And that's fantastic that it's giving these kids and these handicapped kids and kids who may not have the opportunity to get out there and and do these things that this organization, the volunteers, and everyone pitches in and helps. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll put something up too on. Um, on the YouTube channel, we'll type out the okay. and uh, put that up there so people can uh, check out the link and get some information about it. Um, but, but with you guys, have you guys had any pushback from anything about you know why are you making gun holsters? You know, it, people who were anti-gun and anti-Second Amendment. And for you, have you had any pushback from people of why are you teaching this? You know, because uh, people are going to end up hurting themselves or others. No, not that. I get the pushback from the guy. I know everything, I know every law, and I'm going to do what I want to do. I've had everybody from people, and these classes is not, this is not a, it's, you need to be 21 turned in. This, right. this is not a children, this is not a young person's class. Most of your people are middle-aged. Mm-hmm. Uh, 30 is a young number in class. And it's an eight-hour class? Yes. Yeah. State standard. Yeah. Um, it is... You'll have people from the military that say, you know, I learned a new way to shoot. I, I learned stuff I never thought I knew. You'll have people, you know, I've been around guns my whole life. I learned something new. Sure. Um, the laws is, is, of course, a big thing. But um, they'll say, you know, I never did put that together. A lot of people don't put it together is, you know, if if I need to shoot Aaron, we're out in public. Right. He's a bad guy coming at me. If I need to shoot him, I don't only have to worry about him. I have to worry about the, the Iron Man back there in the corner of killing him, too. I'm responsible for that person. Sure. Um, that's something else to think about. People, and then you'll have the person saying, it's my right. Nobody's trying to take anything away from you. They're trying to get you educated. Sure. And part of the bonus of getting it is, that's your pistol permit now. Or your purchase permit, I'm sorry. Um, so you can go buy pistols with it. You don't have to go hassle with the courthouse or anything to, to get mm-hmm. them. Um I, I compare it to a CDL driver's license. You know, you're 16, you can go get a car, drive on the highway. Uh, how many people do you want driving a gasoline truck? 
does everybody you know with a driver's license that they need to drive a gasoline truck? Absolutely not. Okay. It's just a little bit more training. That's all it is to, to, to get there. Yeah. And it, it goes both ways. Sure. Have you had any? Aaron, have you had any pushback? <sighs> No, man, uh, the local community has been really supportive. Um, you, you know, you get into these social uh, settings on online, and you, of course, you've always got the keyboard commando. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's, yeah. So, I mean, you get those guys, but for the most part, locally, man, uh, we've been super supportive. Um, everybody seems to dig what we're doing. Um, again, that's kind of like why. Um, really receptive to our local folks man i, I couldn't ask for uh, i love my hometown and there's so much talent here but when people are behind something man they really get behind it you know sure. what i mean and and so for the most part no um you know some people don't maybe appreciate my views or where i stand on the second amendment but hey that's america and you're free to say whatever you want to it doesn't bother me you're not pissing in my cornflakes <laughs> Okay. Um, we had a little technical difficulty. That's okay. So, we do that. But um, so, but if folks wanted to find um, out more information about your holsters, because you also have merchandise, right? We do uh, t-shirts and uh, there's stickers. Right now it's just like t-shirts. And we do other things than just holsters. We do um, uh, magazine. That's right. You got the magazine holders too, right? Yeah, yeah. we do those. We do... Some other stuff, some knife sheaths. Um, so, like, so we do oh, that's pretty sweet. For those of you who can't see at home, he's got some knife sheaths here and the magazine holders. And then some simple, like, like little wallets. Um, I like this. You can put your, my wife might like that, credit card holder. Yeah, so it's it, nice. it retains it. So yeah, so yeah, so so there's some other things that we make other than just you know. The, you have a bottle, the, ca a bottle opener too. I yeah. saw it. You're yeah. sold out. Yeah, that sold thing out. looks sweet. <laughs> yeah, um, and and so and, and going back to the to, to the custom thing, we got a guy that does laser engraving, so we can monogram some things. It's like his firearm. Uh, oh sweet so, so we have some guys that's field strip llc drew miller if you're out there we appreciate you brother um oh wow and, and so so it's it's so cool thing about him doing the firearm stuff that it adds texture to the grip right and so it's purpose not only ornate um so again field strip llc <laughs> So yep. yeah, so I mean, you know, we, we touch base on a whole lot of whole lot of different stuff. Um, our, like I said, our 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 mainstay are bread and butters concealment holsters. So. And you have them that go inside the waistband. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten to that, right? Yeah, that's the one I wanted to talk about too. Um, how how does the inside the waistband? How does that work? Well, <clears throat> so that's without my... shooting yourself in the nuts. Well, so that's so that's the cool thing about our holsters, right? So. <laughs> So if you're like me, I, I'm one of those guys that I'm not going to carry unless it's hot, right? I'm, right. For those at home, so we, there's no round in the chamber, but I carry hot, right? Meaning one in the, one in the tube. Um, so what's the cool thing about these holsters are is that once it's in here, like I can't get to that trigger. You, you're not going to hit it, and it's not going to go off. That's not how guns are made. You know right. what I mean? Like, um, so it's hot, ready to go, and it's one in the chamber. And I stick mine right down front. I carry Do you really? I, I carry appendix every day. Probably eight to nine hours a day. Now, wait a minute. When you say I carry appendix, what does that mean? That means up front. Um, okay. Appendix. Yeah, right, right, right in front of the groin. Right in front uh, of the appendage. For those that not don't have video feed. Right, right on top of the boys. Yeah. Right. Um, so when I said shoot yourself in the balls, I was actually right. Okay. But so that goes, but, but you, you got to get comfortable with that, right? It's not just a concealed carry class, right? Which is just the tip of the iceberg. Like if you're going to get a concealed carry class and then, then take some combat pistol classes and, and know your weapon, right? Like it's, it's not just, okay, I got my firearm. I'm an instant badass. That's not how it works, right? No. You've got to train and, and pistol is probably one of the most dynamic weapons I've learned to shoot, right? Because it you're learning something every time you go to the range. It's not like a rifle. You sight in a hundred yards and you're tack driving shit for years and years on the end, right? Like, pistol is is dynamic, and, and you have to learn, like, what am I doing wrong? Am I pulling the shot? Am, you, you know, am I combat accurate? Am I, am I 
you know, competition accurate. Like, where do you want to be, right? And so there's a lot of things that go into play. But but know your weapon. Be confident in what you carry, right? Um, and, and, and if you're going to put your life on a firearm, man, buy a decent firearm, right? Like, spend a little bit of money, right? Like, you know, invest in your life if, if it ever comes to that. God forbid I ever have to pull or stroke that pistol, right? But when I do it, it's going to work, and I want it to work every damn time, right? Right. Um, so going back to that, so just being confident in the weapon that you carry. Um, and there's multiple positions you can go, which I consider the 12 o'clock or the appendix, and you've got the 3 o'clock, which is off the hip, and then the 4 o'clock is behind the hip, and then the 6 o'clock is in the small of the back. Um, and those are your predominantly most um, – carryable positions some women like to carry off body uh, we make a holster that you can attach to a purse okay or or jogging jogging yoga pants because like my wife will lay around the house in yoga pants or jogging pants which i'm totally cool with but it doesn't offer a lot of support for a standard holster like this so we have specialty attachments that uh, will facilitate things without belts um dude if some of these yoga pants ain't nothing fitting in there <laughs> this this is true. This is true. <laughs> that um, you're going to conceal. Is that a firearm? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But, um, you know. But God bless the yoga pants, ladies. Well, absolutely. Then, you know, you, you're going to carry around what you dress or dress around what you carry. Let's just put it that way. Summertime, it may be a completely different platform for me, right? Wintertime comes around, I may throw going outside the waistband on because I'm wearing a hoodie and a okay. big jacket, right? So I can sweep that garment or pull it and, and I can get to it. Um, 99% of the time, though, I'm going to carry where you where you don't know about it. And 99% of the time, I'm carrying. You know, right. That's just who I am. And if it's posted in a restaurant, then I just stick my middle finger up and go in anyway. Um, they can't they, they can't take you to jail for that. They can tell you to leave. But yeah. There's, so, yeah, so you're, that'd be a good question for you. So let's say that you go into a movie theater yeah. or a, uh, we'll start the movie theater and there's a, you know, no firearm allowed, mm-hmm. but you carry your firearm in there and you have your concealed, you're legal. No. no, 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 I'm saying you legally are carrying a concealed weapon, but once you enter the premise, you're not legal. So right. they can ask you right. to leave. You can put a sign on your door out here. Right. And it's going to mean the same thing as it is that movie theater. You walk, I walk in here, you catch me with it, you ask me to take it to the car or mm-hmm. leave, mm-hmm. Whichever, you, whichever you choose. I choose to fight you on it. Say, no, it's my constitutional right, whatever you might occur. Then um, you call the police. Yeah. Police show up, they'll ask them the same thing. If they do not leave then, then they'll be arrested. Yeah. Because they just trespass it. Sure. And if, but can you carry... Let, are you allowed to carry your concealed weapon into an establishment that serves alcohol? Yes. Yes. You just can't consume alcohol. You consume. That's that's the that's the, that's the caveat. Yeah. That's the which is consume. which is smart. That's yeah, absolutely. Not you don't want a you bunch of you cannot open carry in a place yeah. that serves alcohol. Right. You don't want to go back to the Wild West and the saloon shootout, right? But I'd rather not. Uh, man, I'm just trying to go to K and W. I agree with you, man. Um, you know, but I'm a proponent that if you can carry, carry everywhere you possibly can. I'm, like I said, like I dread the day that it, it was, if, if it's to happen, right. But, you know, God forbid that ever presents itself, but I feel that with the training and, and the, the extension of what I've learned by carrying a firearm, again, it's not, doesn't make an instant badass, but I think that what we've been through in training and things like that, that you could go to muscle memory and, 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 and survive or protect the ones that are around or right. mitigate what damage that could possibly be done, right? Because, again, the only way you meet violent action is with violent action, right? And somebody's got to be willing to step in and take that responsibility, right? So, And if people want to, again, see your products, that is uh, the website to go to is? Uh, so, they, so they can – obviously, they can go to um, the Facebook page, uh, Black Flag Holster Co., and then there's links to our Square uh, e-store, okay. uh, which are posted frequently. Um, there you have customizable from material to hardware um, and carry preference. Um, so we, we try to make it as easy as and intuitive as possible. Um, but we also like that interaction. So if you want to message us there and say, hey, I, I'm just not comfortable with navigating the site, but here's what I got and this is what I'm looking to do. Like we, we love those one-on-ones, right? Because okay. that's when, you know, I get your feedback and what you like, and then I build around your needs, and I just don't stamp something out and say, here, good luck, right? Like, let, let's make 
that the last holster you want to carry for that particular firearm and then hopefully you'll come back for more so and uh, you also have an instagram page too right yeah yeah absolutely um so we showcase m mainly some of our unique builds um yep. there's some other things that we put on there um i'm not as active on that as i am facebook i think sure. because of the audience reach we get and there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes of IG where you pay for followers and things like that. And I just don't get into that. And again, we, you know, at the beginning of the segment, we just talked about being raw and organic and just kind of letting it happen. Um, and if you like it, great. And if you don't, well, that's cool, too. That's so, cool, too. Yeah. <laughs> and for Concealed Carry, uh, Gray Man, they can find you at? Facebook only. Facebook only. Yeah. Gray Man Concealment I'm not an Instagrammer. LLC. You're lucky to get me on there. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> but they can also, is I'm there a number for them to call? Yes, 828-352-3838. And you have a class coming up? This Saturday. This Saturday. $40. And after Saturday, you have an October class? Yes, i got to check the schedule. Okay. Um, because the building that you're actually teaching in yeah. is a rental. Is a so rental. I have to work with them. Sure. Um, I got, I'll have to look that up. But people can get in touch with you oh, to yeah. find out if there's space available. Yeah. So they can get they in touch call, with you. Text, whichever. Call, text, yeah. and they can find you on Facebook. Yeah. $40, you can't beat a concealed carry class. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, like the law can be dull, but Sean makes it a great class. I've sat in on several classes of his. I've helped do some safety stuff and, and range officer stuff, and it's really, really uh, a great class. So, you know, anybody looking for the concealed carry, absolutely check him out. He's, he's a stand-up guy. Well, guys, I appreciate you guys coming in. Check uh, these guys out at BlackFlagHolsterCo.com and on Facebook, Gray Man Concealment LLC. Guys, I appreciate it. At home, thanks for listening. Again, you get a discount uh, from uh, the holster company. If you can name tonight's intro song and a uh, title and artist. Again, thanks, guys. I appreciate thanks it. For Enjoyed us. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, man. I hope it's...